Hi guys, in our previous video, if you have noticed, I've actually something attached onto my DJI Osmos Pocket 2. Obviously, it's not here now because I put it right back into the box. This is the VND, basically a variable ND filter. Now, what does a VND or ND filter do? They basically act as sunglasses for your lenses to be able to control the amount of light coming into your camera. Now, before we go into that, I think you'll be curious for me to show you guys what I have over here. This has been quite widely used in the YouTube community. This is the Supreme Cash Gun. It isn't expensive at all and I'm going to show you guys what it comes with and I bet you'll be interested. So we have here the box. Let's open it up. Okay, here is the Cash Gun. And obviously some counterfeit Supreme notes, which neither look USD nor any local currency and the gun itself. Obviously once you put it side by side, you can see that it's quite huge. So this obviously runs on batteries. What size batteries? You can see it runs on like triple A over here. So I'm going to get some and check if it works. Okay, here we go, triple A batteries. Let's feed it in. All right, we have three batteries attached. So before putting in the cache, you can hear. All right, you have to remove the cap here and let's put the cash in. Woo! Every time we talk about expensive gears, I'm going to shoot cash from my cash gun. All right, enough of the fun. Let's move on to the ND filters. So here we have the PG Tech ND filter. The filter that we have here today covers about two to five stops, which in professional photography equates to about ND4 to ND32. It'll definitely be sufficient if you are just planning to use this filter to be attached to your Osmos Pocket 2 for vlogging. But if you are planning to use long exposures, you'll definitely need a higher grade of ND filter, which covers about ND32 all the way up to 64. All right, enough of my babbling. Let's see what we get in the original retail package. So we have here the filter itself. Let's open it up. Okay, here is the filter. And let's see what we get with the other accessories first. Okay, you have a lens cloth, microfiber lens cloth, and easy instructions to be able to guide you on how to get this fixed. Some Chinese warranty card, English warranty card. Okay, let's see what we get in the package here. Let's open up. So very simple, you just get the filter right inside the box, which is quite a lovely box. Now that you know what it comes with, let's see up close on how it looks. Okay, it's a rather small little filter. You can see that it's putting beside my fingernail. It's damn small. I'm so afraid I might lose it one day, uh, but hopefully not. It, when you turn to the back, there's this little metal white color border over here, which is basically magnetic. Obviously from the front, you can see that it's like a little wheel and you can turn it for the different adjustments. Let's take out my Pocket 2. So here I have my DJI Pocket 2. Let's move it up close. Okay, here I have the ND filter and let's attach it. So we have it here attached. All right, let's cover on the reasons why you will need an ND filter. Can you live without an ND filter for a DJI Pocket 2? Of course you can but it affects it in two key areas. Number one, aperture. To maintain a certain aperture for your camera lenses, you will need to drop it down to about 1.4 or 1.8. Now, it's not possible to have it at such a low aperture without having excessive light. In case you forget how aperture works, here's a photo to remind you. Your camera lens basically opens up to be able to receive more light in. But here comes the problem. Getting footage in low aperture allows you to have smooth blurry bokeh but shooting it without any ND during the day is near impossible due to the crazy excess of light. So you will need an ND filter to act as a sunglass to control the amount of light coming in to get the ideal exposure that you want. Number two, shutter speed. Shutter speed is often linked with motion, especially motion blur. Now, if you can see, I wave my hand over here. It seems quite natural for the blur between my fingers and my hands as I move. It's because I've abided to this rule called the 180 degree rule. Basically, if I'm shooting my video at 24 FPS, I will have to shoot 1 over 50th of a second for the shutter speed. If I'm shooting at 30th FPS, I will have to shoot about 1 over 60th of the shutter speed. Not following this rule will make your footage very unnatural and jerky, making it hard to watch. Here are a few examples shot with different shutter speeds.
when we put the footages side by side, you can see that my movement looks a lot more jerky in the 1 over 100th and 1 over 200th footage. It is due to the camera sensor capturing more frames in the footage, which theoretically sounds good, but it doesn't make your footage comfortable to watch. Here's another footage of me simply waving my hands. When we compare the clips side by side, you can see that the movement on the right footage looks quite unnatural. The effect of having a VND filter to maintain a certain aperture or shutter speed is quite drastic. Here's a footage of me with and without the VND. Without the VND, you can see that it's near impossible to be able to capture a footage at 1 over 50th. But with the VND on, it filters out so much light and the footage looks so much more watchable. Let's talk about glass quality. Here's a test footage of me adjusting the VND to the different stops. As we adjust, there happens to be quite a lot of blue tint on the bottom left of the image. As you know, the VND is really small, so it's a tricky balance to not have it visible as you adjust it from the 2 to 5 stop range. For all those who think that this blue tint is anomaly, it is not. For bigger lenses which has VND filter, it also happens too. It is just the way it's being made with two different glass elements stacked on top of each other. But coming back to this PG Tech VND filter, here's another test footage of me adjusting it from the 2 to 5 stops. And let's see if this problem still persists. As you can see, it's still quite obvious, but perhaps I'm still not familiarized with the different stops of the filter. Who knows? Oh yeah, I also did a lens flare test for the VND for all those who want to know if there is significant flaring. Let's move on to our favorite topic, which is price. Price. This filter comes in about 27 USD on Amazon. The price is same for the 6 to 9 stop range if you plan to do long exposures. As much as I dislike the blue fringing that happens on this variable ND filter, this variable ND filter is probably one of the few that is only available in the market right now. There are certainly other fixed ranges of ND filters out there already, but you can't avoid the fact that it's quite a hassle changing your ND filters in the middle of the day, especially if you are using for vlogging or any spontaneous form of video production. One more downside of having ND or VND filters is you cannot stack it on top of the wide angle lens that comes with your DJI Pocket 2 Creator Kit. You can only either have this or the filter attach it at the same time. Meaning, if you are planning to use a VND or any ND, you are only stuck at the 16mm range. Overall, I still think that this VND filter still works well for its price and will be a worthy investment if you are planning to use your DJI Pocket 2 for filming outdoors. If you have enjoyed this video, please hit me with a thumbs up and subscribe down below. If you would like to further thank me for my time and effort in making this video, do consider to join my Patreon family. There are perks depending on the tier that you are going for, such as exclusive content. It will definitely go a long way for me to produce more exciting content for you guys to watch. Oh, one more thing, if you're planning to purchase this VND filter, please do use my affiliate links down in the description below. If not, I'll see you guys in the next video.